Welcome back everybody. Today we are going over this generator that you see right here in front of me. This is the Champion Dual Fuel 2500 starting watt uh, inverter generator. So what does that mean? <laughs> so first off, dual fuel. So it runs on both gasoline as well as propane. However, when you use propane versus gasoline, you do lose a little bit of power. Just know that going forward. Uh, but running watts on this unit here is 1850 running watts. And it's very, very lightweight, which is one of the big benefits of it. It weighs 39 pounds. So for a generator that's putting out that much power, super portable uh, and just very easy to deal with all the way around. I also mentioned that it was an inverter. So what does that mean? It means that it's going to put out cleaner, more consistent energy. Uh, basically, if you're using like a computer, um, a router, a gaming system, anything that's sensitive to spikes in power, um, this is going to be what you're going to want to go with in terms of a generator type being an inverter. That inverter is just way cleaner and therefore safer for whatever you're using on the electrical system that it's powering. So with that, let's go over the actual control panel on this unit here. So we have a couple different circuit breakers here, which is nice. Again, another safety feature. We have 220 volt outlets right there on the left hand side. Then moving over to the top here, you guys can see that we have our eco mode, which is going to be the default setting of it unless you're overloading the system or rather putting a higher load on the system is probably a better way to say it. So what that eco mode does is it allows it to run at less RPMs and just conserves energy. Um, so with a full tank on this, which is 1.1 gallons, it's going to give you just over 11 hours of runtime if it's running at 20% capacity. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea if you wanted to plan out what type of fuel you're going to need for your particular use, that should help. Um, and then we have these two pieces here, which is the Paralink system. We're going to get into that in detail here a little bit later on in the video. And then over here we have our controls, obviously all the way to the left is off. And then if you're going to run it on propane, you're going to put that propane uh, knob pointed directly up. You're going to put it on that. And then we have our gas and then our choke all the way here to the right. And again, off here we have our propane hookup and it does come with a propane hookup you don't have to go out and buy one it comes with one additionally it's going to come with this usb adapter here for our 12 volt power source and of course that'll run anything that runs off of a 12 volt power source so anything you can run in your car you can run it right there as well now we're going to go over what you need to do when you get this thing in to actually use it so this is exactly how it comes out of the box it does come with this oil uh, it takes 10w30 however it also works with uh, 5w30 if you're using full synthetic it has all these things hanging on it uh, warnings and whatnot as well as just little pictorial guides um, if you watch this video you won't need any of those so we're just going to cut all this crap off and then open the front plate and we're going to pull this piece out here and then take a Phillips screwdriver or actually flathead both of them work and undo these four screws they do not come completely out And we will set that aside. We're going to add our fuel. has another thing here on it. And it, like I said, it comes with this from the factory. There is no oil in it. And we have our dipstick here. And it, again, it comes with the funnel as well. So a way to quickly just kind of visually inspect how full you are there is when you look down in there, if there's oil covering uh, the initial threads there at the bottom, then you're good. You can also take your dipstick, put it in, do not thread it. And then if you have oil on there, then you're good to go in terms of the amount. So next up, we're going to add our gas, which is up here. You want to make sure that your vent, there's two settings here. You want to make sure that your gas vent is on. And we're gonna add some gas. Uh, just a note, I definitely recommend using uh, ethanol free gas. If you can't get that, it needs 87 or higher, but if you don't have ethanol free, make sure you run this thing dry because uh, leaving ethanol gas in there is a recipe for disaster. Put this on the ground. It's a little awkward on its high. And there you go, we got it all filled up. Put our cap back on. At this point, you can put the backing on. You don't need to at this point. But what we're going to do is take our settings here up front. And we're going to put it all the way to the right um, to get the choke on there. Um, if you're using propane, obviously set it to propane. And uh, at that point, just pull it. 
rock and roll. It should start up. We shall see. Oh, this table's a little shaky. <laughs> And then turn the choke off, and there you go, up and running. We'll put our panel back on. Now obviously that was just for demonstration purposes, but uh, one thing to note here is that uh, for the first five hours that it's running, um, you want to let it run in my opinion, and then after that, change the oil. So uh, obviously the oil change interval is much longer after that, but the initial um, running of it, five hours, change the oil, and then after that, you're off to the races. One of the cool things about these small champion inverter generators is the Paralink system. So the Paralink works with all different types of sizes of champion generators, but this specific one here with the 30 amp plugs and the 30 amp locking plug uh, that you see right here works with any of the champion inverter generators that are rated from 2000 to 3000 starting watts. So you can mix and match. For example, I have a 2000 watt that I reviewed years ago at this point. I could mix and match that with this. And then at that point, you get the total combined output of power from those two systems when operating out of the Paralink up here. So it's pretty simple to do. All you do when you go to install it, obviously you want everything off and you don't want any load on the generators when you're installing it. But you just take the Paralink kit that it comes with, which is actually pretty inexpensive, so that's nice, nice bonus there. And you're just gonna plug the red, obviously positive, into the positive on each one. And it goes in pretty simply. Uh, it's got a nice snug rubber O-ring secured fit there, and then connect your ground wire on each. At that point, you just start your generator up and you can run whatever you need to off of this, as well as your actual generators as well. And again, with this particular setup here, you're gonna get right around 3,700 running watts with these two linked up together. And just to kind of give you an idea, I randomly went to Champion's website picked out some items that you could run together all at the exact same time just off of these two generators linked together. And as you can see, it's a lot. You know, these are two small, lightweight generators, but still giving you enough power to power a lot of the essential things that you'd want in your house in a grid down type of scenario. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that eco mode, and that's kind of its default mode, um, which saves gasoline and makes it run longer and just runs a little bit quieter as well. Speaking of quiet, this thing is rated at 53 decibels. So that's right about what you would expect uh, sound wise from a dishwasher. Now, how do they do that? A couple ways. Number one is an enclosed unit versus an open frame unit. So being enclosed makes it quieter by default. And then additionally, inverter generators, due to the way their electronics work, simply are quieter. So those two things combined make it a very very quiet unit which is nice if you're out camping at a campground or just even if you're powering things in your house if you don't want to hear generator noise all night long um, as it's working so um, we're gonna start it up here again it will be an eco mode and then I think this coffee pot here should put a little bit of stress on it you guys should be able to hear the way the rpms are going to change and the way that it sort of auto corrects itself and we're going to be using some blackout coffee here and uh, they do have a special discount code you guys can see here on your screen for 10 percent off they also have a website that you guys can use if you want to go pick some up but definitely a pro liberty type of company which we definitely like to support here and uh, we'll start this thing up Fast forward the video a little bit and let you guys see how those RPMs change as it kicks in. Again, we're just gonna set it over there to choke. I don't know that it'll need it, it might not. Start it right up. I just turned off eco mode manually just so you guys can hear it. And then that's back on eco mode. You guys heard there, as soon as we plugged it in, it went on. I didn't realize it was on, but that's with it off. Back on eco mode and then turning the coffee maker on. Kicks it right up. Let's give it a minute to brew some coffee. As if I needed any excuse to drink more coffee, 
<laughs> there you go. I'm sure there are some new folks here who are wondering why the heck I'm even talking about generators, because generally speaking here on the channel, we talk about firearms and firearms related accessories. But within that, we also view firearms and firearms related accessories as a means of preparedness, right? So for whatever life may throw at us, uh, whether it be criminals or anything else that would require that, whether we need to hunt with them, etc. cetera. Um, the same would be true, I think, for generators, right? It's just general preparedness, things that everyone should have. It's kind of like a fire extinguisher everyone's like why do you need a fire extinguisher are you expecting a fire no but it's good to have one when you need it and the same is true for generators obviously there's any number of things that could cause you to be dependent on one a car accident takes out the pole in front of your house to a hurricane to a nor'easter to a ice storm to again any number of things and every single time those types of incidents happen and particularly when they happen on a large scale you'll see news stories of people waiting in line at 6 a.m for their Lowe's or Home Depot or for whatever the case may be to open up and they always sell out of generators before everyone who wants one can get one so my advice get one just have one at least that can power something right you don't want your fridge to all the food in your fridge rather than go bad you don't want your hot water tank not to work all of those sorts of things that said these types of systems smaller ones like this really aren't designed to be hardwired to your house you can do that um, champion does offer panels that you guys can pick up and wire it into your house or hire an electrician if you don't know what you're doing um, there's several ways to do it but if that's really what you're trying to do like a whole house type generator probably want to go with something bigger that said the two together could again power a lot of things you can on some of the panels you can select which ones you want to be on during an emergency so you could do that with these two type of generators but again i'm not recommending these for whole house i'm recommending them for you know short-term use camping use uh, powering your refrigerator microwave or a heater an air conditioner something like that they absolutely can do it and again being so portable and lightweight is awesome additionally one of the benefits of having that ability to use propane is that propane doesn't go bad so earlier i mentioned if you're going to use gasoline i highly recommend you use ethanol free and that's because of storage issues right so storing gas can be problematic if you're going to do it long term so with propane it eliminates that and you can have very large propane takes stored up and you may never use them for years but when you go to use them they'll be good to go and you can run this generator both of these generators off of it so that is a benefit of course another thing to look out for is going to be cost so on these right now uh, just looking around they're going to be right around the $600 mark and that is for the dual fuel version of these um, so if you want the one that just takes gasoline you can take a hundred or so dollars off they do offer that both in uh, America and Canada which is my primary two viewing audiences speaking of canada <laughs> reminds me of regulations and the same is true for california so um, they are epa and carb certified if that matters where you live um, i would imagine for guys who run like construction sites out in california that's probably important um, so if it's a, that's important to you just know that they are certified for that um, they run clean they run a long time this particular one has the most hours on it out of the two this one's probably only got 30 hours this one's got easily over 100. I've used it at the range uh, to do some uh, work building up our berms with some of the power tools that we were using out there. Um, works just fine. I made coffee out there as well because why not? Um, so it's been used a lot, been used around here. Uh, my neighbor used it, I just borrowed it to see what you could power with it because he was uh, concerned because winter's coming here and he wanted to see just how these things work practically. So I let him use it for a couple days and uh, have had zero issues uh, these were sent out i should mention that by champion for the review that said the first three champion generators i owned i bought um, and i've done videos on them in the past but the reason you know i've done videos on them is because i like them they performed well i've never had an issue with any of my champion generators and uh actually i did let me clarify that on my 2000 i actually broke this piece off here this little red piece i broke it off during a hurricane where we were out of power for two weeks and i actually called champion like day one and they sent one out and i had it within three days so customer service is good as well and again if you're trying to decide which one you guys want to pick up which model whatever it you need they do have a very good um, power calculator over at their website and we'll leave a link down below in the video description as well with that 
I think we've covered pretty much everything. If you guys have any questions about these, anything like that, you can post down below in the comments section. You can also post those questions over at my various social media sites that you see here on your screen. Um, if you guys like this type of video and you're not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. We have a whole playlist of uh, power banks, generators, things like that, solar panels uh, that you guys can check out the reviews of. If you are subscribed and you fit the notification bell and you're not seeing two to four videos a week, make sure you sign up for my email at the website that you see here on your screen. That email only goes out once or twice a month. Uh, really just depends on how many videos I put up, but the email just has all of the videos since the last email went out. So that way there's no algorithm censoring your eyes from my content. Uh, speaking of algorithms, um, I post deals like if these things go on sale on my various social media outlets, but a lot of times people don't see them. So if you guys want to sign up for those types of deals, whether it be on guns, firearm related stuff, prepping related stuff, uh, those emails go out every day and you can sign up for that email list at the website here on your screen right now. And with that, I suppose that's all I have for you. I appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.